Hello and welcome to another episode of Fanmade Cards. This is the video series where I go over a few different cards I found online and uh, react to how I think they are balanced and how they fit into the game thematically. And uh, the first few cards today uh, were made by David Tursi uh, and posted on the Terraforming Mars subreddit. As always, uh, all posts, original posts, are linked in the description and uh, the creator's name is also on screen right now. So please check them out, uh, leave a like and uh, leave your comments on how you think the cards are balanced or made in general. But let's first talk about Venusian Capital, which I think is a very, very interesting card because it's basically the first Venus multiplier in the game. Um, because on here you see uh, you get one point for every true Venus text that you have. That, of course, is less strong, much less strong than um, Jovian multipliers, which give one point for every Jovian tag. I would need to check how, uh, the, how many Jovian cards there are in relationship to um, Venus tags. So if we're playing just with base game Venus and Prelude, there are... 14 Jovian uh, project cards, uh, also one corporation and two preludes. And there are 32 Venus uh, cards, um, also three corporations, no preludes, obviously. So there are ma uh, many more uh, Venus uh, cards than Jovian cards. So in that sense, it, it, it definitely makes sense to um, make the multiplier weaker. But the problem with uh, a lot of the Venus cards is that they are pretty bad and you don't want to play them. Um, and that's, this will definitely factor in here. Then uh, also this card is, I think, quite expensive because it costs 16, which is not the problem. The problem is this minus two power prod that you don't get um, a compensation in terms of uh, economy, economy for. Um, it costs power prod, which is typical for cities, but usually cities, or so something like Cupola City, for example, grants uh, some uh, MC prod in exchange, and this one doesn't. So this is truly only a point dump. Uh, it doesn't give you any any uh, economic benefit to play this. Uh, you get to place a city on Venus, uh, so this city uh, cannot accumulate points accumulate points for greeneries and pretty much doesn't do anything other than trigger effects like pets or rover construction. And then you get two um, Venus resources, which could be two more points from, for example, Venusian animals. Um, so this can make the, the point payoff of this card uh, much stronger. The thing, this down here, I think this will never give you more than like six or seven points. It's really hard to get more than like Wait, no, not six or seven. I would say maximum of five points. Like you're never playing 12 Venus techs. Like 10 Venus techs is already an inordinate amount. Like that's crazy. So this down here, more likely a maximum of four points, not five points. So let's say best case scenario, this grants four points and this grants two points. So six points. Um, it costs 16. Then 16 plus three. And then seven uh, per power prod, so that's 14. 14 plus 19 is uh, 33. 33 for six points. It's all right. Like Terraforming Ganymede costs 33. And if you play that for six points, that's, that's okay. Um, but especially if you can pay for it with Titanium. You could pay for this with Steel. Uh, and we need to talk about this building tech anyways. Um, and if you have like steel left over, power port left over, then this card is super cheap. Like let's say it's last gen, you don't have any other steel dump other than the Nugen capital here. And you have like, maybe you played mass converter earlier, use that power prod to uh, increase the temperature. And now that power prod is left over. Um, then you can definitely um, play the Nugen capital quite cheaply because it has a base cost of 16. So uh, it can be really, really cheap. But the theoretical cost, like if you need to pay for all of this, if you don't have steel left over that you can't use for anything else, then it's quite expensive for what it does. So I think it's too expensive. Um, and then we need to talk about uh, the lower aspect. 
Uh, first of all, this building tag, in my opinion, doesn't make any sense because the building tags basically indicate that you're building something on Mars. Um, because if you think about all of the Venus cards and all of the off-Mars cities, none of them have a building tag, even though you're building something. The building tag specifically means that you're building something on Mars, like Dawn City, for example, or uh, Stanford Taurus, Phobos Space Haven, Ganymede Colony. Those all have either space tags or just a city tag or whatever. So this building tag, in my opinion, doesn't make sense. And then uh, you're also building a city here on Venus, um, which I think also doesn't make that much sense law-wise, because um, basically the the Venus uh, terraforming starts law-wise after the Mars terraforming. And um, basically you're not at a stage yet uh, uh, in the t game's time frame where you can build something on Venus. You basically have all of your buildings uh, in the atmosphere uh, on, on some floating uh, construction sites. So this wouldn't really make sense. And like both of these points were raised by people in the comments. And uh, David Tursi actually um, made an alternative version of this card. Also, um, people in the comments already raised the concern that the card is too expensive. And let's take a, a, a look at this also a rebalanced version of the card and also retrofitted um, in terms of law. And it's also renamed to First Venusian Metropolis. Now it costs 9 MC instead of 16. And the most striking difference immediately is that instead of having, having a requirement of two floaters, it has a requirement of 26% Venus, which is absurd. Like, uh, that's really, really high. The, the, the scale goes uh, up until 30%. So this is like super, super, super late game. And also, if you're not playing with the rule that Venus needs to be maxed out, you will almost never reach this. Um, but in exchange for that, it's much cheaper, 7MC cheaper, and uh, you, it only requires one power prod. So it's in total 14MC cheaper. It drops the building tech though, so um, you cannot pay for this for, uh, with leftover steel anymore. But it makes sense uh, law-wise, and because it's also on Venus, it wouldn't make sense to have a space tech. So it's actually, it actually makes a total sense to have just the city and the Venus tech. And then the rest of the card is unchanged. Now, I think it's a really, really situational, but if uh, a really, really situational card, but if the situations line up and everything works out, then it can be really strong. Because um, if the Venus parameter gets maxed out, and then you see this card in a draft or you draw it for free and have a lot of Venus tags and maybe Venusian animals, then it's crazy good. The thing is, you want to push uh, the Venus track already if you have Venusian animals because that card can be truly ridiculous. Uh, so, and, and if you have Venusian animals and want to push the Venus track, you might as well push to 26 and then you get the most out of these two Venus resources as well because Venusian animals together with stratospheric birds um, would be the cards that you want to place these resources on. So this is a really, really situational card that has crazy payoff if it works. But the fact that it has such a high requirement and it needs a, a, com a specific combo card, one of two cards in the entire game, to be at its maximum. And then also a ton of Venus tags uh, makes this card on average quite bad, I think, still. But in the right situation, it completely pops off. But uh, I think thematically this is now uh, much better because at this stage of Venus terraforming, 26%, you might actually build your first Venusian metropolis on the ground of Ven on Venus and not uh, up in the air anymore. So really, really cool adaption. Um, and I think we can now get to the next card, which is Equatorial Skyscrapers. And this is a really cool concept. So this costs 24 MC, building and uh, city tag. So you're building on Mars again. You are allowed to place a city tile in the three middle rows of the, the Mars map. It costs uh, one power prod. And it has an ongoing effect that says when you play a building tech, including this one, you may use your next action to trade for free. Um, and because this has a building tech, it says it on the card. 
uh, you can play this and then you can use your next action immediately to trade for free. So basically you are saving three power or if you don't have power, you're saving a nine MC or three titanium, but most of the time you're saving three power. Um, and uh, you can, like if you have card draw, some steel income and like a continuous um, opportunity to play building tax, this can basically save you three, sometimes six power uh, per gen. Um, thus, the, uh, like, is this worth it? Uh, three, saving three or six power per gen, but also losing a power prod and paying 24 MC for just a city. Again, no economic benefit. I don't think so. I think it's like you're not getting a trade an additional trade fleet. Like you have to tra trade with your existing trade fleet. So this doesn't allow you to trade more than you, you could. Uh, it just saves you power basically. And for that, I think it's way too expensive. Um, sure, a city can be useful. Uh, you can either pick up resources, you can secure a good spot on the board, and it can also score a lot of points. But you're also um, like uh, constricted where you can place it. Sure, on uh, Elysium and Tharsis, you most of the time want to place it in the middle three rows. But on Hellas, for example, those middle three rows aren't that spicy. Um, you would either place it, uh, place your city rather down south to go for the uh, milestone or uh, for the south pole or up north around the oceans um, to get some really good uh, placement bonuses. The middle three rows really aren't that great. Um, I think this is just too expensive. Law-wise, I think the reasoning behind this effect is that um, your, your buildings, uh, like, First of all, rockets are best launched relatively close to the equator, to my knowledge. Um, and then basically you also uh, have building these uh, really large skyscrapers off of which you then can uh, easier um, uh, launch your rockets. I think this should be the law um, reasoning. Uh, I'm not quite sure, but I think it's an interesting concept. And again, um there was an adaption made to this card that i want to take a look at and i think it's really interesting to have like uh these these um discussions on reddit like people posting their um uh their custom cards and then people commenting there saying hey this is maybe a little bit unbalanced or this is um this doesn't make sense uh thematically or law wise uh you might want to change that that's also exactly what I'm doing right now, uh, reviewing these cards, but I would also highly recommend you guys checking uh, out these discussions on Reddit yourself, and that's why they are linked in the description. And the adaption here is making the card a little bit more, a little bit cheaper, like going from 24 to 21. Uh, and then it also grants a one MC prod. This is like a tiny change. Uh, the MC prod uh, basically like four MC, worth four MC and then um, the three MC discount up here, basically making this card seven MC cheaper. Not that tiny if you think about it. Um, still quite unsure if it's that worth it, but definitely uh, now a card that I would consider if I have a lot of uh, steel prod and card draw, as I said earlier, because then you can sometimes, like the thing is, you cannot really um, rely on this card to trade every gen. If you're playing with colonies, you want to trade every gen. And with three power prod, you can do that. You know I'm going to have three power every gen, I can trade every gen. With equatorial skyscrapers, um, you don't know if you can play a building tech every gen. And if you then, if you play it and say, okay, now I don't have to develop three power prod, um, because I can just rely on equatorial skyscrapers to trade. And then comes a, a gen where you um, can't play a building tech or don't want to play a building tech, then you're suddenly missing out on the trade. So you really need to develop your power prod so that you have a backup for equatorial skyscrapers. And then it's really just saving you three power per gen. Um, and because it costs you a power prod, it's really only saving you two power per gen. So yeah, I 
don't think this is a, a particularly strong card, uh, but I think it's a, an interesting concept and it could be made maybe a little bit uh, stronger. Maybe what you could do is instead of making this a city, make it a special tile and make it really cheap. Uh, make it like, um, like, call it like Equatorial Trading Hub or something like this. It uh, grants you more development, so maybe something like minus one power prod, uh, plus three uh, MC prod. Um, and it's like a special type, like commercial district, and it costs only like uh, 12 MC or something like that. Uh, that would maybe uh, be a bit, little bit cheap because, yeah, something like that. I, I don't think you need to make this a city. You can still have the restriction that it needs to be placed in the middle three rows and so on. So you can definitely think about this a little bit um, or make it just a little bit cheaper. Like it's an interesting concept you can work around with. Uh, but let's get to the last card that was made by David Tuzzi, which is Subcontractors. This is also a really interesting one. It has an earth tech, costs 10 MC and requires two cities uh, on Mars. Oh, wait, is it? Just two cities in play, so they don't uh, specifically need to be on Mars. Um, it, when you play, uh, you reveal uh, cards from deck until you find one with a building tag and or earth tag and you draw that one. Uh, everyone will know then what card it is, but uh, still quite nice. And then it gives you a discount on building tags, 2MC discount, and allows you uh, to use steel when using the city standard project. Uh, this can definitely be worth it. Like, um, if you're, for example, I think this is like best used for mining guilds. Mining guild can sometimes quite easily end up with inordinate amounts of steel port, like absurd amounts of steel port, like eight or nine steel ports, something like that. And if you don't find like super, like like a ton of card draw, like to spend nine steel per gen, you basically need AI central or, or development center plus restricted area because you're never going to find enough steel uh, building tags in a draft. So if you're playing mining guild and you get that much steel prod, which is also kind of an overinvestment, but sometimes you get just like if you have you start off with ice asteroid. Uh, that's suddenly you have three steel prod. Then you draw mine for free, uh, play that with your steel, you have four steel prod. Then you find like uh, natural preserve and restricted area. You might as well place that on titanium or whatever. Suddenly you're at seven steel prod. So sometimes it's, it's super easy with mining guild to get to such, a, such an amount of steel prod and can still be uh, worth it. And with subcontractors, it makes it much easier to spend all of that steel. Uh, the first effect may actually makes it harder to spend the steel because the building tax you draw will be even cheaper, so you can spend uh, less steel on them. Um, but then it gives you the option to uh, build cities uh, with steel, and that's actually super useful if you're in that situation. Because um, if there's greeneries on the board, or if you get some plant prod yourself, it basically allows you to directly convert your um, steel into points and a little bit of economy but the economy is uh, negligible, but it allows you to uh, convert your steel into points and it also allows you to deny your opponent's points. So this can be really strong. And then um, revealing cards until you find one with either building and or earth tech uh, is also of course quite nice. You might actually want to find the building tech because if you're playing this, I um, think you're playing it because you have too much steel. And then you actually want to find a building tech. Um, but how often is this card worth it if you're not playing Mining Guild? That's my question. Um, you will, like, there's a saying, if you fund Miner, like funding Miner has a high correlation with losing the game. Because when are you funding Miner? You're funding Miner when you have too many minerals. That means you have overinvested into minerals. You've spent your MC in an unwise way. And um, you need that amount of mineral uh, prod and specifically steel prod for subcontractors to be worth it. And getting that much uh, steel prod with any other corp than mining guild, I think is just 
doomed for failure. Like it's 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 not a good play, and therefore I think uh, subcontractors, like especially the second effect, can be uh, quite bad. Of course, you can also just play this for the for the top effect, but it takes quite a while to pay off. If you draw, if you have to buy this in the draft, it costs thirteen in total. So that means you would need to pay uh, play seven building tax up here, seven building tax uh, to recoup the investment. Of course, you can also get a card. Let's say um, um, you're playing that card. It's a good card. Then we can say it costs three MC. So the card is only uh, costing you 10 MC. Then you still need to play five building tax for this card to pay off. Um, so yeah, that's, that's actually quite an investment and can be quite risky. I think it's a situational card, especially with Mining Guild. I think it can be super good. And on a starting hand where you already have a few building tags and you get some steel prod, it can also be quite nice. But the thing is, uh, you cannot play it immediately because of these two city requirements. Like this requirement uh, makes the card immediately so much worse because you can't play it um, out of your starting hand. You cannot immediately play it because there are two cities in play at the start of the game. So yeah, I think interesting card. Can be quite nice for mining guilds for all other corps probably too weak and too situational especially with this requirement but uh, let's get to the next card which is the golden twins and this one was actually made by gady laga 112 uh, regular in this series uh, they have made a lot of cards already that i reviewed and uh, last episode we talked about ajovians and ajovian new jovian multipliers and uh, this trend actually continues uh, they seem to love um, jovians and jovian multipliers because the golden twins is another jovian multiplier and actually a, a funny mix-up uh, between jovians and venus so it's a really expensive card 33 mc has a six percent venus requirement a jovian tech no space tech so quite hard to get this down 33 mc is a lot you cannot pay for this with titanium it grants you uh, this 1MC discount on Jovian and Venus tax. Uh, I just checked earlier, there are <laughs> uh, 32 project cards with a Venus tag and 14 Jovian tags in the base game plus Venus next plus prelude. So that's uh, 46 uh, project cards that you could possibly play. Of course, you're not getting all of them. That's that's an okay amount. Um, I wouldn't play. I would never play this card for the discount. Only of course uh, you're only playing it if this down here sounds interesting to you. So if you want a Jovian multiplier, you also get two floaters. Um, if you're only playing with Venus Next, that means you're putting them on a uh, Venus Next floater card. When you're playing with colonies as well. Uh, there are also some Jovian uh, floater cards and those of course would combo well with uh, the fact that this is a Jovian multiplier and then you also get one TR so basically one more point. So this card is kind of all over the place and therefore a bit hard to rate. Um, like I discussed uh, in my last episode uh, in the comments uh, with a few people uh, on the value of Jovian multiplier and the community seems to agree it's um, like 15 MC or somewhere between 15 and 20 MC, uh, maybe more like 15 MC. So if this is 15 MC, uh, then there's like 18 MC plus three left. Uh, this may be at three, four MC on top. So like 21, 22, 24, something like that between 21 and, and 24 mc for this card and then um you, you basically pay 20 let's say 23 mc for a tr two floaters and a discount uh, and a jovian tag uh, one tr that's maybe like uh, 17 like 8 mc so 16 for floater plus discount Seems a bit expensive to me. I think the Golden Twins is a little bit overpriced. This calculation was also a little bit all over the place. But like, if you break it down into the individual components of the card and the last component that is left over seems overpriced to you, 
then the whole card is overpriced. And I think this card is a little bit too expensive for what it does. And the fact that it doesn't have a titanium tag, uh, a space tag, which is a common theme in the um, in the colonies expansion, uh, there we ha get some new um, Jovian tags that don't have a space tag, like Jovian lanterns, Jupiter floating station, Red Spot observatory. Uh, all of them are quite good, but they can be quite expensive because they don't have a space tag, so they are hard to get down. Or Titan air scrapping again. That's a super expensive card, um, and it doesn't have uh, a space tag. Same with the Golden Twins. This is the most expensive out of the bunch, and it's yeah hard to get down. I think a little bit too expensive. Of course, if you have like seven Jovian tags, this obviously is worth it um, because it will score you a crazy amount of points. But the thing is also, it's a mix between a discount and points, and you want to get a discount down early, but you want to get a points down late, um, and the discount is also not that huge, so there's really a conflict in this card. And I think with the next card that I will talk about, we have a similar conflict, Joby and Biolab, and this is a really interesting one. So it costs 20 MC, much cheaper, also has a Jovian multiplier down here. Jovian tech and microbe tech, super interesting combo, never seen before. Requires two science techs and then an action uh, that allows you to remove one science resource from this card to add a microbe to another card. This card starts out with five science resources, but the, tr uh, the kicker here is that you only get these uh, Jovian multiplier points down here if you spend all of the science resources. So that means, first of all, you need a microbe tag, a microbe card where you can add microbes to. And secondly, you need to play this uh, five gens before the game ends, or four gens before the game ends, because in the last gen you can also use it. And then again, it's a mix between points and having to play it early. The thing is, this card is much less expensive and um, it could combo really nicely with something like a nitride reducing bacteria, where you want to add microbes to throughout the game anyways. Um, of course, that card isn't that great, but still, uh, it could be a nice combo. I also, uh, like you could also combo it with, um, uh, if it was, what's it called? GHG producing bacteria and regolith eaters. But the thing is, with, if you're using it in combination with those, these cards will uh, help end the game. And if the end, if the game ends too fast, Jovian Biolab uh, won't grant you any points because there will be uh, science resources remaining on the card. So there's a risk in using it in combination with those two. But like there's a few good uh, Venus uh, micro cards and there's, as I said, NRB. You could also use it on ants, decomposers, uh, psychrophiles. So uh, quite a few good possibilities. Uh, a super interesting concept. I, th I really like it. Um, I think this is also um, much more fairly priced because um, it has the same price as Ganymede Colony. That card really doesn't do much more than um, granting points. But this one has a restriction and only grants you points if you play it early enough. While Ganymede Colony, you can just keep on your hand until the last gen, play it then. And that one also has a space tag, which uh, means it's much easier to get down. So I think this is uh, fairly priced. I would see myself picking up this card uh, in a Jovian strategy, but then I would also uh, see myself uh, cursing myself because I need to play it early and uh, need to spend 20 MC on something that doesn't give you give me development. It can uh, although help out with something like nitride reducing bacteria. But yeah, this one I really, really like. I think it's my favorite uh, card in this episode. Really interesting concept. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments what you thought uh, of these cards. Uh, do you think they are balanced? Do you think they could use some work? Do you think they are uh, interesting lore-wise? Definitely check out uh, the Reddit posts that are linked uh, in the description. And yeah, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and consider subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one, guys, and goodbye.